and it becomes more clear when you start, when you look at this verse here. I know some of you aren't too keen, <clears throat> excuse me, on the book of Enoch. You kind of, you think, oh, excuse me. Now, here's a question before you get into this verse. Why would they yeah. take the book of Enoch out of Scripture? Yeah. I maybe wonder why. It, maybe because it talks about Yeshua. Yeah, yeah I cover that <laughs> in one of my videos. Um, I, For anyone that's not familiar in this audience, I actually uh, play the lecture from modern-day Hebrew Emeritus and Dead Sea Scroll professor Rachel Eliar from uh, Hebrew University in Israel today. And she, in her lecture explains that first century religious leaders of Judaism, so the same Pharisees, scribes, and priests that betrayed and killed Yeshua, they later decided that the average person, if they wanted to be a part of Israel, could not read Jubilees, Enoch, or the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. Wow. So, because it, it shouts the law, the priesthood, yep. and Yeshua everywhere. And so... That's how people were coming to faith and belief so easily in the first century. They understood all this context. They saw how Yeshua completely, perfectly fulfilled this stuff, and it was praiseworthy. It was it was instantly life changing to realize, oh, he actually arrived, and he fills he checks off all the boxes because yeah. we know what all the boxes are, right? Mm -hmm. In the modern day, the average believer doesn't know what all the boxes are, so they get caught up in these bad anti missionary arguments. Yeah, and one thing that's tough about the talking about the book of Enoch and Jubilees with other believers is they're, they're like, nope, uh, uh, I don't want to hear it. It's not in the canon. It's not in the 66, brother. And I used to be like that. And then the father, I guess he hit me over with, over a head with a brick, a, not a literal brick, but a <laughs> metaphorical brick. And Because I used to be like, I'd go to a congregation, there's people that are reading Enoch, I think Jubilees too, and other books. And I'm like, man, why y'all reading that? Come on, dude. That's not, that's not scripture. And then you open my eyes and I'm, I've read all of Jubilees and I'm close to actually finishing uh, Sean's uh, study guide on Enoch. And it's, it's amazing. If anybody out there is, has not got a copy of it, I highly recommend it. I was blessed to meet Sean in person at Adam's Parable Vineyard Congregation and he blessed me with a copy, but it's, I highly recommend it. It's amazing scripture study tool because he cross references so much stuff just to show that the canon lines up with Enoch. Yeah, it's yeah. color coded. It's literally color coded. He he uh, was awesome enough to send me a copy of this book. It's color coded to tie it in to the Bible, to what we call the canon, the, the books that we have now. And so you can cross reference everything. I'm trying to have my wife or somebody bring it down so I can show it. Uh, it's it's really cool. And I know I uh, had the John get one. <laughs> oh, you got one. There it I'm is. actually I'm <laughs> actually giving does. away giving away one of these tonight. Later after this broadcast. Um, nice. Uh, to to people that that qualified for it on my other channel, so um, but yeah, it's just a book I put together that it outlines all of Enoch and then color codes everything that that's from the canon of sixty six that matches Enoch and even there's one that you had on screen right here, um, Josh, and it's uh, the chosen one where it talks about um, it's I, I don't know if you saw that scripture, but um, or I think it was the scripture right, maybe right before this, but either way, this is the book of Enoch. It calls. Um, the elect one in Enoch 61 and some translations, like I think it's the Lawrence calls him the chosen one because that's the same thing as the elect one. Mm -hmm. yep. And so then we see that actually in Isaiah 42, it literally says my servant will rule the nations, my chosen one, you know? So like it's, it's the language, even the language lines up. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really beautiful. I got emotional. I was reading Enoch for the first, uh, for the first time when I was investigating the truth about creation and, and just looking at Enoch with an open mind and I, and I'd bought a copy of the dead sea scrolls uh, fragments where you have, you know, it has the book of Enoch in there. And I yep. just started comparing and they were so similar. I'm like, how is it? How could this be a hoax if it matches up so well with the dead sea scrolls? And we received this version of the book of Enoch before they even found the dead sea scrolls. So they couldn't have copied something that hadn't been discovered yet in the caves of Qumran. So Man. it it was uh, it was powerful seeing this because you don't see descriptions like this in the Old Testament about the the Messiah, and it's it's beautiful. I got emotional reading. I'm over reading it on the couch. My wife's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, I'm "Just <laughs> reading something here that is really cool that I haven't seen before." And uh, I want I want to read this for some of you who haven't seen it. Um, it there's a there's a couple more slides that go along with this, but it's here's Enoch getting seeing these things, being shown these things, and it says, "And there I saw one." 
who had a head of days and his head was white like wool. And with him, there was another whose face had the appearance of a man and his face was full of grace like one of the holy angels. And I asked one of the holy angels who went with me and showed me all the secrets about that son of man, who he was and from where he was and why he went with the head of days. And he answered me and said to me, this is the son of man who has righteousness and with whom righteousness dwells. He will reveal all the treasures of that which is secret for the Lord of spirits or for the Lord of spirits has chosen him and through uprightness, his lot has surpassed all others in front of the Lord of spirits forever. And when it says the Lord of spirits, it's talking about the father. And so I, I, this is color coded because I was using it for a Bible study. Sorry about that. I know that's confusing, confusing some of you. Um, and at that hour, that son of man was named in the presence of the Lord of spirits and his name brought to the head of days, even before the sun and the constellations were created, before the stars of heaven were made, his name was named in front of the Lord of spirits. He will be a staff to the righteous and the holy so that they may lean on him and not fall. And he will be the light of the nations and he will be the hope of those who grieve in their hearts. So like I said, I got emotional reading this the first time. Uh, still do. It's just really cool. It's really cool images that the Enoch was shown and the enemy was against this. And this is why those unclean spirits were like, Hey, you're the son of God. You know, you match that description. They knew when, when he was, when he was talking to them directly, what is your name? He knew these unclean spirits had a history, a history that we see in this book, who, why they have names, why they're angry, why they're set out to destroy the truth about creation and hide all the evidence. That's why they know who he is. And uh, they're very familiar with this book. And there, you see, oh, it keeps going. I'll read another one. All those yeah. who dwell upon the dry ground will fall down and worship in front of him. And they will bless and praise and celebrate with palms. Or with psalms, not palms. With psalms. Sound like uh, Joe Biden there. The palmist. With, <laughs> with <laughs> 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 did that. Don't do it. Don't the, do it, Josh. The palmist. I should have went there. Um, oh, <laughs> the psalms. <laughs> Reach the name of the Lord of Spirits. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Some of you might be that might be a little touchy. And because of this, he was chosen <laughs> and hidden and, and hidden in front of him before the world was created and forever. So, really powerful stuff there. You guys got anything to add to that? I know Sean probably. Well, let yeah, me say this. Real, let me say this. Go ahead, Matthew. Sean. Uh, another thing for the validity of the book of Enoch in Jude. He calls Enoch a prophet. So we have to throw Jude out if we're going to throw Enoch out too. So just saying. Scrap that book. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 42 matches everything you were just reading in, in first Enoch. Um, do you mind if I read just uh, two or three scriptures real oh, quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me. Yeah. It says, here's my servant whom I'm uphold, my chosen one and whom I sold delights. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow weak or be discouraged before he has established justice on the earth. And here's you know just more language to match what you just read. In his law, the islands will put their hope. The islands. The na that's, you know, people of the nations, right? The yeah. islands will put their hopes since they're surrounded by water, according to Jubilees too, huh? So what's interesting is that the, all the same languages there, the same prophecies are there. Enoch 46 and 48 calls him son of man. Um, Isaiah 42 calls him my servant, speaking Yahweh's servant, the chosen one, and specifically that the nations will hope in him. And this is why, you know, it's like this is Yahweh talking about a second character. This is not Yahweh talking about himself coming down. This is yeah. Yahweh talking about a second character. That this is the one, my servant, my chosen one, whom in whom my soul delights. Um, also, real quick, there's another thing in the Psalms. You had those scriptures up about the Psalms earlier, but mm -hmm. there's another one that anti missionaries completely, absolutely glaze over, and it's in Psalm 16. And this is what Peter repeated in Acts 2, uh, specifically saying that this Psalm was written about the Messiah. So in Acts 16:10, for you will not abandon my soul to shield, nor will you let your holy one see decay. So who's the holy one? Peter wow. tells us directly in Acts 2, this was about Yeshua. Now, just fun extra homework, guys, for anyone in the audience. 
go through Isaiah and Psalms and see how many times it mentions the Holy One of Israel hmm. and what oh. message he has for <laughs> Israel. So here we got another second character. Even just if you just at face value, you read this verse, you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. This is the psalmist speaking. Nor, secondary, nor will you not let your Holy One, that's yours, Yahweh, the possessive, speaking of the subject matter, Holy One, a second person, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. So Yeshua, mm -hmm. obviously, dead for three days, did not decay, was resurrected to the glorified bodies. Mm -hmm.